What's important here is freedom, and that's what truly matters. Uh, I was in Coots uh, for a couple days, so I have experienced a beautiful, a beautiful time. Uh, there, there was no violence. It, it was, it was um, people supporting each other, standing, standing for a purpose. And uh, the reason I'm here is because I was born in the Czech Republic and I know what communism feels like. In order to experience that, you have to live it. So I, I, I've known it in my gut since the COVID restrictions before they even became a huge issue. So that's why I'm here to show my support for the boys. I'm outside the courthouse in Lethbridge, Alberta, where proceedings have just come to an end on Thursday for the two defendants remaining in the Coots 4 trial. Robert Krejcik reporting for Rebel News. The two remaining defendants, Chris Carbert and Anthony Olenek, are being accused of conspiracy to murder. They're being accused of conspiring to murder RCMP officers. They're also being charged with mischief and weapons crimes. These charges arise from their involvement with the Coots protest, the Coots blockade of 2022, a sort of adjacent sister protest in unison with the Freedom Convoy in Ottawa, Ontario. The two demonstrations shared a political objective, broad opposition to what I refer to as the COVID-19 enterprise, this apparatus of surveillance and control imposed by government alongside ancillary institutions, edicts, mandates, decrees, you all remember it. A publication ban remains in effect, preventing me from reporting on any of the proceedings. This publication ban is set to expire once the jury is selected. The rationale behind the publication ban is to prevent any sort of tainting of the jury pool. I spoke with a couple of lawyers about publication bans in general, and they told me that defense attorneys typically request these. These serve the interests of the defendants in order to protect them from, again, being judged by a jury which has been tainted by information that should never have been publicized in the first place. However, once the publication ban comes to an end, I will be happy to share all the interesting information with you going forward and that which can be shared, which took place before. So stay tuned because as we approach the jury selection process, there's going to be a greater flood of information coming out. And this story, this unfolding event will become more interesting. I spoke with a couple of ladies who came in from Edmonton. They are what we can call interested parties. They are supporters of the defendants. More simply, they are definitely opposed to the prosecution of Chris Carbert and Anthony Olenek. They've sort of been paying attention and involved with opposition to the COVID-19 apparatus long before the two defendants were charged. I sat down with them at a restaurant and got some of their thoughts in terms of what they think is at stake, what they observed in the Coots protest, and I'll share that with you now. Back in 2021, I became a protester and I started organizing events pushing back against excessive restrictions. I was receiving ticket after ticket after ticket from the RCMP. I had moments I thought I was going to jail. And although I thought I was going to jail, I pushed forward anyway. So when I look at the situation at Coots and that there are people who have been to jail simply for exercising our constitutional right to peacefully demonstrate, that concerns me very much. And these people who are serving time in jail, in a sense, they're serving time for us. And it's partly due to their sacrifice that we have the freedoms we have today. Now, our freedoms, we still need to do a lot of work towards protection and restoration of our rights and freedoms. What's important here is freedom, and that's what truly matters. Uh, I was in Coots uh, for a couple days, so I have experienced a beautiful, a beautiful time. Uh, there, there was no violence. It, it was, it was um, people supporting each other, standing, standing for a purpose. And uh, the reason I'm here is because I was born in the Czech Republic and I know what communism feels like. In order to experience that, you have to live it. 
So I'm, I, I've known it in my gut since the COVID restrictions before they even became a huge issue. So that's why I'm here to show my support for the boys. And so I see this as a persecution, not a prosecution. They are political prisoners. The reason that the, the Crown and the RCMP is giving them such a hard time is simply because they chose to express opposition to government restrictions. And so it's very concerning when we live in a culture that if you express opposition to what your government is mandating that they want to put you in jail and deny you bail for over two years. There's a gross injustice carrying on right now. And one of the things we need to do, and I'm glad you're working on it, is we need to make more people aware of this situation. And so, because the more people who become aware of it, then the more people can put pressure on elected representatives, representatives of law enforcement, even representatives of the Crown and the judicial system, and put pressure on them that this is unacceptable and we have to get back to being a nation where justice is done. We're running two digital campaigns to fundraise for two sides of this trial. One for the Legal Defense Fund supporting Chris Carbert. You can visit helpchris.ca and issue a donation to help him out. On the Rebel News journalism side, we're unable to do this sort of in-the-field journalism for free. I came in here from Ottawa, flew in, got a car, got an Airbnb. We depend on your contributions to maintain these operations. So if you want to help us, please do so and go to truckertrial.ca.